Welcome to Unit 13, Video 1, Mole Ratios. By the end of this video, you should understand how a balanced equation can be viewed as a recipe. You should be able to determine mole ratios from a balanced equation. And you should be able to perform calculations using mole ratios. In this unit, we're going to start talking about something called stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is the study of the quantitative relationship between reactants and products in a reaction. Therefore, in this unit, we'll be thinking about balanced equations like recipes. Take this recipe here for Carl Sagan's apple pie. This recipe tells us lots of important things. First, it tells us how much of each ingredient we need to make a certain amount of product. So as you can see here, if we want to make eight servings of apple pie, we're going to need one nine inch pie shell, two tablespoons all purpose flour, and so on and so forth. It also tells us how much product we can make from a given amount of ingredients. Imagine I had twice as much of all this stuff. That means I can make twice as much pie, or 16 servings of apple pie. And finally, it tells us the ratio in which each ingredient should be combined. If, like we said, we want to make 16 servings instead of 8, I not only need double the amount of flour, I need double the amount of everything else. Because our ingredients have to go together in the right ratio. We need one pie shell for every 6 apples and every 3 quarters of a cup of sugar and every 1 half cup of brown sugar and so on and so forth everything must stay in the proper ratio. Now let's take a recipe and make it look like a balanced equation. Here I've written a balanced equation for making a s'more. I've obviously made this up, but here I'm telling you that you need two G2s, so two graham crackers, and of course they're G2s because everybody knows that graham crackers are diatomic. There's two per square. You need three chocolate squares, and you need one marshmallow to yield one delicious s'more. So here our ratio is two, gram, two G2s to three CSs and one MM to yield one s'more. Consider the questions below. How many s'mores can we make with six chocolate squares? And assuming excess graham crackers and marshmallows. Well, since it takes three chocolate squares to make one s'more, we can make two s'mores with six chocolate squares and excess graham crackers and marshmallows. Pause the video here and consider the answers to the next two questions. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Looking at the second question, we know that it takes two graham crackers to make one s'more. Therefore, it will take 16 graham crackers to make eight s'mores. Likewise, if we need three chocolate squares for every one marshmallow, we'll need 21 chocolate squares if we're going to use up seven marshmallows. Now let's translate this into a chemical equation. Take this equation here. If I balance the reaction, I know that it takes two moles of NaOH and one mole of H2SO4 to yield two moles of water and one mole of Na2SO4. So let's determine some mole ratios. In order to do so, we're going to need to look at the coefficients on each uh, compound in the equation. The coefficients are like the amounts in a recipe. So if you need two cups of sugar, the two would be like the coefficient here. If we want to determine the mole ratio of NaOH to Na2SO4, we look at the coefficients. Recall that the coefficient of NaOH is 2, and that Na2SO4 will have a coefficient of 1, which we don't need to write into the balanced equation. So our mole ratio is 2 to 1. For every 2 moles of NaOH, we'll produce 1 mole of Na2SO4. Pause the video here and determine the other two mole ratios. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice for the last example, our coefficients are each 2, so our 2 to 2 ratio can be reduced to a 1 to 1 ratio. Let's look at the kinds of problems we can solve using mole ratios. Taking this first problem, if we have 2 moles of NaOH, 
How many moles of Na2SO4 can we produce, assuming that there's plenty of H2SO4 to go along with our two moles of NaOH? Well, since we know that for every since we know that for every two moles of NaOH, we get one mole of Na2SO4, two moles of NaOH should give us one mole of Na2SO4. Looking at a second example, if we have 3.2 moles of H2SO4, how many moles of H2O can we produce, assuming excess NaOH? So here, if we, have, if we know that one mole of H2SO4 will produce two moles of water, then 3.2 moles of H2SO4 will produce twice as much water to give us 6.4 moles of water. Here's two more for you to try on your own. Pause the video here and determine the answers to the last two problems. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. In the third one, we know that for every two moles of NaOH, we need one mole of H2SO4. Therefore, if we have 2.4 moles, moles of NaOH, we'll need half as much, or 1.2 moles of H2SO4. Finally, in the fourth one, we know that every time one mole of Na2SO4 is produced, we also produce two moles of water. So if we have 0.25 moles of Na2SO4, we'll also get twice as much water, 0.5 moles of water. While it may have been easy to reason your way through the problems on the last slide, sometimes the mole ratios aren't quite as easy to work with, so I'm going to give you a method for solving these problems. Take this example. 1 mole of N2 plus 3 moles of H2 yields 2 moles of NH3. Imagine I want to know how many moles of ammonia, NH3, I can make from 0.5 moles of H2 and excess N2. While you may be able to figure this out in your head, the mole ratio of 2 to 3 is a little trickier to work with than, say, a 1 to 2 ratio. There's two ways to solve this problem. The first is to use a proportion. In this case, on the left-hand side of our equation, I'm going to put our mole ratio. Our mole ratio is 3 moles of hydrogen to 2 moles of ammonia. On the right-hand side of the equation, I put what we're given in the problem, 0.5 moles of H2 over X moles of NH3. In other words, I'm saying that if 3 moles of H2 gives me 2 moles of NH3, then 0.5 moles of H2 should give me X moles of NH3. Solving for x, I find that I should get 0.33 moles of NH3. It's good to check to make sure this makes sense. I should definitely get fewer moles of NH3 than I had moles of H2, since my mole ratio is 3 to 2. Taking the same problem again, if you prefer, you can use the... Taking the same problem again, we can also solve it using a conversion factor. Here, we write the given and multiply by a conversion factor to get our answer. In the problem, we're given 0.5 moles of H2, and we want to multiply by our conversion factor, which in this case is, again, the mole ratio. Our mole ratio is 2 moles of NH3 to 3 moles of NH2. Notice I've put moles of what I want on top, NH3, and moles of what I have on the bottom, H2. This will allow our given units to cancel with the moles of what we have. Canceling our units then and solving yields the same answer, 0.33 moles of NH3. Both of these methods are equally good. You can choose which method you prefer. As long as you show your work, I don't care what you choose. Here's some problems to try on your own. Pause the video here and try these. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice that in each case I have not let my mole ratio limit my number of sig figs. Since these are counted numbers, they have infinite sig figs and will not limit your number of sig figs in your answer. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at how to use a balanced equation as a recipe, giving us ratios in which reactants will combine to form products. Then we learn to determine mole ratios from a balanced equation using the coefficients in the equation. 
And then we performed calculations using mole ratios, either using a proportion or a conversion factor.